The hope is their star quarterback, Michael Penix, has a completely healthy season this year. Three straight years now, he's had a season-ending injury. And when he's healthy, watch out. 10-2 as a starter for the Hoosiers, led the Big Ten in passing yards per game last year. He'll tell you, he's ready to roll. Myself, personally, as far as the knee, I'm feeling real good. I feel like... I'm ready to play, so I know September 4th comes. I know I'll be ready 100% with no concerns. I think Mike's um, he's coming along for sure. You know, he's on, on pace. He's making good progress. Um, you know, the month is important for him to continue to um, just rehab and get strength. Um, but he's looked great. You know, he's certainly played a lot of football, familiar with the scheme. You know, I think it's really it's just been a process of integrating some of the new pieces we have on offense with Mike and him accustomed to them and vice versa. But super talented players, had a good attitude, certainly still moves well and throws it well. So big things ahead for Michael and, and certainly fortunate that he's our quarterback. Penix and the Hoosiers will be looking to build off a historic season in 2020. They got ranked the highest they've been since LBJ was in the White House. Three wins over ranked teams in one season for the first time since the year World War II ended. Beat a ranked Big Ten team on the road for the first time in nearly two decades. And beat a top ten ranked team for the first time in 32 years. Dave Refson and Howard Griffith with more on this year's version of Indiana from Bloomington. Howard, just had a chance to watch the Hoosiers go through practice. There's so much anticipation. You can feel it in the air here, ranked in the preseason for the first time since 1969. What are the keys in your eyes to them being able to fulfill those expectations? It starts with Michael Penix in the offense. I, I know who they are defensively. They've shown us over the years under Tom Allen what they can do. They're going to take the football away. But on the offensive side of the ball, it all has to start with Michael Penix. And he had an unbelievable year and has always had really good years, but then the injury bug would come bite him. And, and that's where if you can keep him healthy, uh, the weapons that are around, Hendershot, uh, Freifogel, they have guys on this team that can, can make plays. And I got to tell you, this is the best I've seen this uh, Indiana offense look from a skill position-wise. You look at the offensive line, there's just talent up and down this team. Yeah, no doubt. And look, they did not run it great last no. year. I mean, for all of the success that this mm -hmm. team had, six Big Ten wins, which tied for the most ever, no. they averaged about three yards a carry. Mm -hmm. So Carr, the transfer from USC, looks like he will help. But again, you mentioned keeping guys healthy. Yeah. I was speaking with Tom Allen before practice. He said Michael Penix has been running really mm -hmm. well. I saw him on the sidelines a couple times yeah. running on his own. Again, just testing that knee and, again, looked really good as we watched him. And they're encouraged by his rehabilitation mm -hmm. and the point that he's at. You mentioned defense, other side of the ball. This is an area where uh, they led the Big Ten mm -hmm. in sacks. They were second in the nation in interceptions. This is a team that can cause a lot of problems. And that secondary really creates a lot of those turnovers. And I think what they do is a great job of disguising what they're doing on the back end. So that's going to help them. But they've got pass rushes. You talk about a team that's really taken advantage of the transfer portal and done it, I, I shouldn't say the right way, because they got the guys that they need, needed to plug in. And we didn't see them all today, but it's very evident that they're going to really help this team elevate. Cannot wait to see this team <laughs> in action against the team we're going to see yeah. next. <laughs> the Iowa Hawkeyes, a ranked matchup on the opening weekend on the Big Ten Network. We're going back to Indiana now. So much talk about their exciting offense. How about that D? The Hoosier defense made big play after big play last year, leading the conference in interceptions and in sacks and in total takeaways. Individually, they're led by Micah McFadden, who was first team all Big Ten last year, and he talked to Joshua about this coming fall. I think it's just about, you know, running to the ball first first and foremost for sure, just have an effort on uh, on 11 spots and then after that I think it's guys creating havoc and making plays on the back end and, and breaking up passes and getting picks. Just from a team standpoint you look at the offense obviously got a bunch of returning players there how does going against a really good offense help benefit the team? Yeah I mean our offense is throwing us a lot of looks and you know we're having to adjust a lot to, to keep up with that but it just you know it just gives us more of an edge uh, with the stuff we're going to see during the season. McFadden's accolades were matched last year on offense by Ty Freifogel. The fifth-year senior wideout was also first-team All-Big Ten, and both those guys were third-team All-Americans last year. Freifogel was top four in the Big Ten in all of these receiving categories last season, and he gave some time to Howard. Ty Freifogel joins us right now, wide receiver, one of seven super seniors on this team right now. 
Tell me how that experience has changed you from when you first came into the university. Um, I mean, it's just the game, you know, it's changed a lot. You know, a lot of things have changed, but, you know, it's really exciting to be, to still be here five years later. What are some of the things you wanted to work on this offseason to elevate your game? Um, just, you know, as, as a rec from a receiver standpoint, you know, my speed, my routes, um, getting to know defenses, just learning coverages, just getting out breaks, just everything all around as a receiver because I feel like you can never be too good at anything. As a team that had so much notoriety last year, how is it that you guys are battling not becoming complacent and still staying hungry? Um, I mean, we, we're still, you know, the same uh, hungry Indiana team that's, that it's always been, you know. I mean, we know it's a target on our back this year, and we're just going to take it one, one game at a time, one week at a time. Last year, in a league where Ryan Day didn't lose a single game to a Big Ten opponent all year, and where Pat Fitzgerald once again brought a school most known for their smarts to a football division title, who was the coach of the year in the Big Ten? Tom Allen. Before Allen, Indiana had one winning season since 1994. He's given them two straight the last two years. He's actually made them not the underdogs anymore, and he's standing by with Dave. Happy to have the head coach of the Hoosiers, Tom Allen, with me. Coach, there's so much anticipation surrounding this season. You finished last year, ranked number 12, highest here in more than a half a century. Get the bulk of that team coming back. A lot of expectations. I'm sure these guys hear it. They're aware of it. How do you coach a team differently when there is that much expected of them? Well, you know, we've, <clears throat> we've addressed it in regards to uh, talking about those expectations and we don't, we don't run from them. But at the same time, we've talked even recently about how you handle that. You know, we talk about surrendering the outcome. You know, when you, how, how, how does it, what's that look like, you know, for a guy and how he prepares? Because I think you can sometimes, you know, feel all those things and then you, you put pressure on yourself and, and, uh, that's part of it, but so I think it's important for us as coaches to, to address it. You know, we've got a vision for what we want. We've said that we don't, we're chasing after. We've established that. And then now we say, how do we get in ourselves when we get in those positions to be at our best when it counts the most? So to me, that's about surrendering the outcome. Let's dive into personnel a little bit. So much focus on Michael Penix. We know how good he can be when he is on. The issue, of course, has been the injuries, three mm -hmm. straight season-ending injuries for him. What have you done in terms of working him towards – this preseason camp and trying to keep them healthy. Yeah, it's a huge goal, obviously. And, and I think even just as you even watch their special teams periods, he does additional things, you know, for his legs and to be able to, to strengthen those areas. And that's going to continue, you know, to me. And it's also about, you know, how we you know, call the game and the way he handles situations on the field and being smart. You know, he's obviously got to compete and, and get uh, get first downs and do those kind of things that you have to do to win games. But but I think it's just being, uh, you know, smart in how we use him and how we train him consistently. It's going to happen throughout the season. Uh, we're not going to let up on that. And, uh, you know, our goal is obviously getting through this and, and let him have his best season yet last question for you last season was such a great one for this program and yet the fans were not able to be here to enjoy it what will it mean to have them back and to be able to perform in front of them well it'll be awesome I had to use a little crowd noise because we, we have missed all that you know our guys haven't played with that kind of sound to, to play with on the road for sure but just being at home is gonna be awesome i can't wait to get our fans here and, and pack the rock and and uh definitely you know missed them last year we all did but uh, they're excited to be back and i think they're gonna come back in full force